What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we are back on the day of 30. Going to be chipping away at a few random little jobs. Because we're still in lockdown here, sort of chipping away at a few jobs I wanted to do but haven't been like crucial enough for say. Um, so there's a few little gussets and stuff so I'm just going to make a little gusset here with some nice dimple dies just to support the back of this. Because you guys probably remember I made that the other day just to help hold that plate. But it also ties it into the cage. So I do one at the top here for this. Originally I wasn't going to do gussets at the front here either. But I think I might do, going to make some dimple dyed gussets for in here. Literally just for looks. I was going super super weight saving at first. But I figured we've got enough power to be able to push through an extra few grams of steel on either side. So I'm going to chip away, make up those gussets. And then we'll see how we go. I might even jack the front up and have a look at a few bits in the front. Just do a bolt check and stuff after the track day. We definitely got plenty of little jobs we can get stuck into, so I guess we'll see how far we can get today. Okay guys, so it turned out pretty sweet with the dimple dies, as you can see. But I did have to just modify my dimple die a bit. Because the only problem with these I found really is it's quite a big body. It's got a large flat surface on the outside, which I know is to help when you press it flat, it flattens out around the hole. But it doesn't have a, it's just got nice conformed shape. But it also means that you have to have your dimple dies quite far apart. So these are going to have to be like 57 mils apart pretty much um, and it was a bit further than like 55 mil centers I mean and it was a bit further than what I wanted I like them when they're nice and close like that and it's sort of each dimple reaches almost straight away into the next dimple so I ended up cutting just a bit of a flat face on one side so that as you go along you just move along that edge and then it still has most of the flat surface for the flattening and then just a little piece where the dimple sits. But we're pretty happy with that. All I've got to do now is mark my folds for the two ends and then, and then it should be sweet. We'll see if it fits. Alright guys, so this is how it's going to sit. Pretty much like that. Get a bit of a weld on there. Same on this side. And then this one here. Like it just doesn't quite sit flat because of how that actually raises out but why i'm running for the boot lid is there's like a tab that drops down the back here and that i don't i only need that i don't need the big hook that goes up the front so what i'm thinking is i'll just take a slice out of here like that give a wedge out tap that in put a few spot welds back on that so it's still got that for support and then that'll sit down in there nicely and we'll spot weld and stick that on there. It should be good to go. Hopefully it goes easy like that. Alrighty guys, so I'm actually stoked there with how this is turning out. It's actually fitting real nice all the way around. I'll just fire the welder back up. We'll buzz this on. I'll just do a few stitches along here and then my spot welds along here. Sweet, pretty stoked of that. 
stiffen up the sass end of it like, oh, almost forgot one. Right, now it's actually welded up. Give it a bit of a scotch for it. Maybe a bit of a <laughs> with the grinding disc. Or the flap disc anyway. Alrighty guys, so after some pondering, a little bit of calculations. I've come up with this. This goes this way up. So you can see the holes on this side. It'll sit about there. And then sort of marked out where I want my hole centers. On here, as you can see. So just gonna go ahead and cut two of these out. The other side fits pretty much exactly the same as this side. So the lateral bars must have been pretty close when I welded them in, um, which is good, obviously. So we get two of these cut. I'll bomb the hole saw through. That has to go through first, because that's the size of the thread for the punch. And then we can um, punch them, dimple dye them. It is going to get a bit tricky in here trying to weld this off with the windscreen in, but we'll uh, figure out a way to make it work. So we'll get stuck in and get these cut out. So I just finished pressing the dimples into the first one, as you can see there. It's actually turned out pretty sweet. I do need to clean that writing off. What I might do on that bottom, instead of having it straight, have it radiused. And then set up the bead roller and put a bit of an edge on there. Just to make that bottom a bit more finished off. Maybe do the same with the top, even though you can't really see the top. If I do the same up there. And then it'll just sort of have the same pattern as the dimple die. So I'll finish dimple die on this other side one. And we'll figure out what we want to do with that top and bottom. So I've just cleaned up the paint off of this edge in here and gave the roll cage a bit of a sand. And got this to where I'm pretty happy with how it sits. But I pretty much just need to sort of awkwardly wrestle in there and get it tacked in place. But because it's got a bit of a twist in it, I sort of need to try and balance it, tack it along this edge first, and then pull it down to shape and tack it to the bar. So I'll set this up on a tripod and I'll see if I can not get burnt. <laughs> See if we can start stitching it on, see how it goes. Alright guys, give the window a bit of a clean, you can see it a bit better now. That side's kind of hard to see because there's so many stickers on that side, but what I'm going to do is just chuck a sanding barrel on the die grinder, just give them a bit of a smooth off and a flatten off, and then maybe a bit more of a scotch bright, and then pretty much I can just leave those until I paint the cage. They are that electric girl stuff anyway, so they won't rust too much, or rust by the welds, but not the rest of it. Give it a bit of a spruce up, a bit of a clean up in the back here, and then it'll be looking pretty good. Alrighty guys, so with that grinding work done, as you can see it wasn't too much of a mission. It was a pretty cruisy day today, I managed to get that gusset and the two front gussets done. Um, the main thing really is taking your time with the first template. And I used to have a real bad habit of rushing the template because it start like looking sort of semi right. You think, oh yeah, it's close enough and start cutting. So I've had a few cock ups from rushing the template stage. So as long as you take your time on the template stage, you should be able to at least get your shape pretty close and then from there it's pretty easy obviously not everyone has dimple dies or whatever but if you're looking at doing a heap of fabrication it's well worth getting them these are new zealand made ones that's why i got these these are from motorsport fabrication services i th 
think it's down in Christchurch ways or something. The only bummer about these is there's no hole through the middle. Because obviously with these, if it's in like a panel that's already on the car, you can't really clamp it. If it's in the middle of somewhere, some sets have bolts through the middle. So these have to be depressed or in a vise or something, which is what it is. They were pretty cheap, I can't remember what they were. I'll see if I can find the price and put it down below. Um, but yeah, it's got to get them because they're New Zealand made. But other than that, it's only like hole saws and stuff really. So if you are thinking about getting into doing this sort of stuff, I'll definitely get into it. It um, takes a bit of, bit of messing around to get it right or whatever, but it's well worth it. It's pretty rewarding. I'll probably leave it for this video. Not sure what we'll get into in the next video. Probably look at doing some of that, um, stop the leaky sump and everything on the motor. So just for checking out this video guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.